it's over Linda. So the engineering is done, the factory is ready, and thousands have been reserved. Time to meet the man behind the Grenadier. So what can I tell you about Jim Ratcliffe? Well, he's one of Britain's most successful ever industrial entrepreneurs. He's made billions from seizing opportunities and doing things differently. Luckily for us, he's also a very keen off-road enthusiast. For the last five years, he's been daring to disrupt the 4x4 market on a global scale. And as ever, he hasn't been afraid to put big money where his mouth is. Building the Grenadier has been a fascinating engineering adventure for us. But how's it been for him? So if you go back to the, the beginning of it then, what did you see that made you go, there is an opportunity here now? I spend time in off-road vehicles and there, are, there aren't many choices anymore. There's a lot of the world need to drive vehicles off-road. If you look at all the car companies in the world, they're all making luxury SUV. They're all making 4x4s, but they're not cars that you can take off-road. Uh, so there was a big sort of hole in the marketplace really, I thought. There's a legendary meeting in the Grenadier pub when yeah. you had that conversation. It kind of feels to me that that is going to end up in the same file in the 4x4 archives as the drawing a Land Rover in the sand in, in, the Ang sand, Anglesey. in Anglesey. Yes, you know on the beach. Yes, five yeah. years from now, people will be talking about that meeting. Going from that to deciding to invest a billion dollars in creating a whole new car company to do this, that seems like a massive leap. No, it was just a belief that, you know, if you set your mind to do something, you can do it, you know, and I mean, we've sort of embarked upon a number of challenges in life, so to get the thing homologated is, is a, an immense challenge in the automotive world today because it's become so complex. And was it very clear to you then at that point that there were, you know, some really key things? To fit that market, it has to be this, this and this. I had reliability, off-road capability, and looks. If you, if you take those three points to try and go on, you, you try and rate a Land Cruiser or a Defender or a BMW X5, you can, you can rate them on the triangle quite easily. So the idea was on my triangle to make a car which was excellent at the three things. I had some crossword with the commercial department. When we first started releasing you know, stuff about the Grenadier, when we were, we would describe it as being, you know, great car and da 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 da, da. and um, I said, look, that, that's not for you to tell people it's a great car. You can tell them what the car is. They can make them mind whether it's a great car or not. And a big decision was, of course, who you got as your chief designer. Um, uh, Toby, he's got no experience in automotive, and that, was that, was that a, again, a, a very deliberate decision, or just happened that he hadn't done any, any cars before, but you knew from, an, from a design perspective that he had the right ethos, the right approach, and he'd get what was in your head? Yeah, I think we all know what we like and what we don't like in a car. I knew what I wanted it to be, but I didn't know what it was going to look like. I mean, I've always said with engineering that, you know, I want a car that will never break down. But in terms of design, it has to look good. You know, it wanted to be a, a sort of a more modern interpretation of the 4x4s that were around, not moving in the direction of these luxury SUVs or things. You know, it wanted to be functional and tough. It's, it, it's all about, you know, design follows form and function. I mean, that ladder frame chassis, I think we worked on for three years. Wow. Just the ladder frame chassis. Really? Changing the... The shape, the design, this, you know, it's not just one metal, it's mm. all sorts of different alloys in it. Uh, so just a load of frame chassis. For us on the outside, no, you, don't see kind of, you don't see that at all, do you? The Eureka moments are bits, so you suddenly get the back looking pretty good and you'd be quite pleased with it and you don't need to touch it. And then, but the front looks shit, so you know, you, I'm still getting cross with Toby. <laughs> <laughs> What was the process in terms of going, right, we're going to do this, we've done the due diligence, we know it's, we're convinced it's going to work. I've now got to build an automotive business when I've got no experience in automotive. How, how did you even begin that process? Business is all about trying to make reasonably good quality decisions consistently. You know? I mean, we finished up obviously with a good partnership with BMW, with a you know, fabulous powertrain, with a really good partnership with Magna. We finished up buying that fabulous car facility in the middle of Covid. I mean, that was an opportunity that popped out the woodwork and we were lucky. It was a brand new facility. 
a capacity of 60,000 vehicles for the new paint shop, polish shop and assembly line. Um, and it was fairly perfect for the Grenadier, really. And then in the more immediate future, other variants of the, of the existing, the, the current Grenadier platform? Yeah, we'll do the pickup truck, the long wheelbase, the station wagon, but with a small cutaway pickup at the back. What about electric drivetrains? What about hydrogen? Yeah. What about alternative? I think the Grenadier is perfect for a hydrogen engine in time, but what we're also looking at quite carefully at the moment is a smaller version of the Grenadier electric. We need to embrace the future, which is, you know, clearly in an urban environment is going to be electric, but even in a, a country environment, when you're a farmer, you probably will have an electric car, which you can drive around on the tracks and things like that. So you want one that's capable, but it's electric. So I think that's our, our sort of vision at the moment. Your background with INEOS is, is all about doing things differently. Did you also look at the automotive industry and go, this is a very traditional industry in the way it does things, the way it operates, the way it designs, and that's why we're ending up with all the cars looking the same? Yes, I, it, it's quite similar to a lot of the chemical companies I've bought from the majors, where they have their way of doing things, and, and we've challenged that, and we do it differently. And I think automotive's finished up in a similar place. As you say, it's probably why you finish up with all the cars looking the same. Do you like being a disruptor, though? I like challenges, and this certainly is a challenge, I can tell you, if you come from the chemical industry, but I think at the end of the day, we might be, we might be quite successful. Final mile, the testing, this, you know, over a million miles of testing on road and off-road is, is coming to an end now. We thought we'd invite a few interesting characters to come comment on the vehicle at the end of this process. A few of those have sat in the car now and have quite enjoyed it. So we've had Toto Wolf, Dave Brailsford, Ben Ainsley, Elliot, yeah, in Africa, who drove very well apparently. George Russell in the sand dunes in the Middle East. You know, all the feedback I've had so far has all gone very well. But it's quite quite interesting to hear, you know, their feedback from their, you know, from their different views. Have they broken any? It's not breakable. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your time, but also on behalf of thousands of people like me, thank you for having the balls to make our dreams a reality. Oh, well, let's see. Five years ago in a pub in London, Jim Ratcliffe announced a very bold but very personal ambition to build the world's purest 4x4. A no-frills, uncompromising, really capable, reliable, off-road utility vehicle inspired by the great 4x4 legends of the past, but better. So a billion dollars later, have Jim and the team achieved what they set out to? Well, that will be for you to judge, so time will tell. But the wait to find out is nearly over. <laughs>